Joe, you want to back side here? Do you like bad teeth or? He's got pretty bad breath. Yeah. Like kidney disease, yucky. He has bad teeth though. Let's pray that it's bad teeth. Not kidney disease. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 This is Rusty Caracal. He's 19 years old, and for the last several days, about five or six days, he's only been eating partial meals. So Dr. Wynn came in on a Sunday to look him over and do some diagnostics and see if there's anything we can fix. Hey, Kathy Sell. Hi, Stephanie Witherspoon. No, Eli, it's worse than a checkup. He's got really terrible breath, so Dr. Wynn says he may have some bad teeth, but he's probably got kidney disease as well because he's 19 years old. Oh, I hate when they do that. Sometimes they hold their breath when they're sedated, and you think they're dead for a few minutes until they take another breath. We have a better run if you don't roll it so much. Mm. Do you want him pushed over closer to you? You're stretching a little bit. You want some more space? <laughs> Sad. Man. So I can't say all the horrible things. Yeah, put that right there. <laughs> it's so people can hear you when you mumble. <laughs> is touching the edge of the table and it's cold. <laughs> is what I was thinking. Oh, the table's very cold. Good morning, Vivica. You have people watching from Scotland and India and Quebec. Is it over there? Yeah. Good morning, good night. Yes, yeah, good <laughs> evening, good morning. That's like, wow. From Lake Jovita, Newport Ritchie, everywhere. Cats are designed to withstand fights with other cats. So the way their blood vessels are made, they are very tiny so that if they get bit, it's hard for any opponent to hit a blood vein or a blood vessel. 
and they kind of roll away from you. So when you're trying to puncture them with something, they keep moving away. More so if you're on camera doing it. <laughs> Just I know people wonder. My technicians are like, ha oh, ha ha, she hates a lot of drugs. She does all of this upright. No, we could do that if you want. That's how I'm used to holding this upright. Yeah. Melissa, this is Rusty. He's a 19-year-old caracal, and he hasn't been eating well for the last five days, six days. So the vet has come in on a Sunday morning to do diagnostics and see if there's anything that can be fixed. <laughs> Susie says she has those rolling veins too. <laughs> <laughs> You've become a cat. blood cell count, so signs of anemia or infection. The other one looks at organ function. They go in different tubes because the one that looks at red and white blood cell counts um, has to be whole blood. Clot, and we spin it down in the centrifuge, and then we run the serum. He has, but he also has periodontal disease. He has pretty bad plaque on his back teeth, so part of us will pray that that's the smell. We'll see. And then we'll just do a complete physical exam. The blood has to clot first and then spin in a centrifuge tube, so it makes the most sense in the timing wise to draw the blood first because it takes the longest time to process. Then we can finish this physical exam and take his x-rays and by the time all that's done we can put all of our info together. His retinas look okay. In cats you can see signs of hypertension or high blood pressure in their retinas so we use veterinarians use different ophthalmoscopes like that to look at the back of their eye that's what we're doing when we're staring at the back of their eye. We look at their cornea, we look at their lens, and he has aging changes in his lens. The grayness, me, in his eyes is from that. Um, but he doesn't have a cataract or anything. And his retinas look okay. And then since they don't blink while they're sleeping, we put lube in their eyes to keep their eyes from drying out. People are asking where caracals are from. Um, from Africa and up into the Middle East. Um, and there's also some in India as well. So we look in their ears and we're looking for debris or signs of infection and if their eardrums. If they had an inner ear infection or a middle ear infection, they might show signs of being wobbly or disoriented. And if you've ever had like vertigo, it makes you feel bleh, like weird, like car sickness, but worse. Because it's all the time. So we're going to 
feel all those joints to feel for signs of arthritis. The word we use is crepitus. That's that <laughs> crunching sound your joints make. And his left wrist has crepitus. His right does little. Is this the he, leg you said he was limping on? He was having trouble at one point flipping it the right way up. Okay. So the neuro neurologic things like not placing it properly are hard to tell when they're asleep, but we can feel for arthritis. Um, other things we're gonna feel for, unfortunately, is this, he's dehydrated. Your skin should pop back down really quickly if you're well hydrated, like that. And because we do this on him and he stays kind of, he tented up like that, that means he's dehydrated. Other signs can be sunken eyes and when they're really bad, their gums are dry. Because he was medicated, it's a little hard to tell about the dryness of his gums. He's really slobbery, and but we know he's dehydrated. So they're going to try and pull some of his urine directly from his bladder to see what it's looking like, which would be a reflection of what his kidneys are doing. Kirsten, I think all of our joints are starting to do that here. chart back in July. Sometimes the subtleties we have to look at with animals that won't talk to us or aren't really um, giving us much of an idea is sometimes their breathing will change. They'll either breathe faster or they'll hold their breath when they're in pain. Or they wake up and bite you. Oh. <laughs> Which has always made me wonder if they're anesthetized and they're reacting to things that are painful, then are they feeling pain when they're under anesthesia? Probably. So maybe that sleep is now much slower. Okay, that's yours. Okay, uh, get suited, you two go get suited up. I left you a guest. Um, tag. Tag in there. Carol, are you gonna go in? Do you want to? Yeah, because our cameras aren't working. Oh, explore here. Um, that's why he's up there is because the x-ray camera is down. Oh. 
I was telling a client about it just the other day because they had a niece who wanted to do animal things, and I'm like, well, one of the things you could do is go to school. That's cool. Thank you. All right. The CDC is working. Great. All right. Let me let me get some measurements real quick. Because okay. I didn't set anything up yet. So Carol, the one thing that I keep looking at is right here. See this ulceration? See how the gums are regular here and here? It can be still kidney disease or see how the tartar is the worst over those teeth. Is that the black line? Yeah. Is that and all see tartar? this all of this creamy white stuff is tartar. Oh. But there's also one here. So that lays right there on the bad tooth. This and this, and it's red. It's kind of subtle with him asleep, but can you see it right there? Yeah. There's irritation on the gums there. So that ulceration is either from not good kidneys or really bad teeth. So if his kidneys are good, then we'll clean all the tartar off as fast as we can. You're doing chest. Jody Lynn 19 is extremely old for this cat. These guys usually live to be 10 or 12 at most other facilities in the wild. They usually live to be 10 or 12. And here they typically live into their late teens and early 20s. Oh, yeah, that's an important part. Thank you, Gail. Gail just brought me my badge. Okay, so what do you want to do first, Liz? Start from the uh, That tells us so if we we've been exposed to too much x-ray. And we'll do his elbows and... Skull or the shoulder? Shoulder. 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 Thank you, Alicia, for point okay, posting that URL. That's great, Nicole. Carol Kelly, there's nothing open on the cat yet, no open wounds or anything. That's why she's not wearing gloves yet. Double click. It's thinking. Yeah, but it's not really it's, uh, it. I was going to say you need to say which view it is for it to think about it. So yeah. you pick what body part and what view. Yeah, but it's just, it's like I've got shoulder here, but there's no shoulder on here. You know what I'm saying? While they're away, would you move closer to him in case he, like, suddenly wakes up? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And then, but, so I think the way Jamie does it is then she clicks on each body part and does this. Right. And then, oh, that's sad. I put them in the opposite order. We're going to have to be careful. All right. So I'll just read the list down so that right. you know which one you're doing. <laughs> Jamie showed me how to do it, and I forgot yesterday already. Uh, okay. So okay. you just want to go back all the way up to the top of this list using that, and then. All right. So we're doing front extremity, shoulder, right. and it's, it's set as a five, which is low as it, it goes. Okay. Okay. 
He is about the size of a dog, but definitely not dog-like in any way. Elizabeth, it depends on what's wrong with him. If it's a dental issue, okay. he'll heal fine from that. But if it's kidneys or toast, okay. that's not something you can right. heal from. Because next, I think on your list is abdomen. But we're going to do all of the laterals. Or abdomen lateral. I think that's what's next. Yep. I, all right, so wait. Uh, lateral is... Yeah, that's just Thank you, down. Teresa. Thank you, Irene. Good morning, Mary. All right, right? Yep. What she'll do is shoot okay. all of the x-rays and then she'll go back and study them for a few minutes. Next, lateral chest, because it's just easier to do all the laterals first. So when we take x-rays, we want the cross beam to be in the middle of the area that we're looking at. The x-ray machine itself adjusts the x-rays to pace based on okay, what you're ready. organ we're look or what part of the body we're looking at to shoot at a different damn <laughs> you <table. laughs> I hit the buttons again. My feet are too big. <laughs> okay, next should be pelvis on your list. Lateral pelvis. Oh, you didn't actually click the pelvis. Okay, let me get pelvis. And then lateral. Um, Somebody's asking what you use to sedate him. Because he's um, really out. <laughs> yeah, he's he's old and we adjust okay. what we sedate them on based on their age and how sick they are. And sadly, we do want him very out because he would be unpredictable awake and even partially awake. Um, so it's a combination of huh, metatomity, <laughs> bladder stones. Huh, that might have been why you were straining that day. You were trying to pass the bladder stone. Um, okay, what's next? And um, metatomity and ketamine and midazolam. We use smaller doses of everything to make the side effects less. So go back to the beginning. Wait, you got to do the extremities, his back legs. Thank you, Michelle, but actually it's been a tough three years. All of the cats that we rescued in 93, 94, and 95 are now in their 20s.
Do you want and the trough? Back to the, yeah, that might be easier. Um, Press the trough. The little one. Since usually I just use the water body to do it. But all right. <laughs> Kind of like moving a liver around. Can uh, Joe come down here so you can kind of hold his head so he's not like laying on that? But you can't be. Don't make it too tight so he can't breathe. Yeah. And you need to have these on because your hands will be there to scatter. You can grab that. Oh, as well. So, Gail, we're going to start with chest. All right. So, chest. <laughs> um, did you, did we, you didn't measure him up and down that way. For the, up, so, for, no, we measured it this way, but we didn't measure him up and down. Okay, it looks like the uh, kidney stones, or the bladder stones. Well, I guess it'd be kidney stones was from back in July. Had a little bit of straining back then, but uh, then it passed, so he must have passed the worst of the stones that he had. Obviously, there's some still left, so sure, they can medicate for that. It's just a matter of what else is wrong with him, and we won't know that until we get the blood work back and get a good look at these x-rays. We're going to stand kind of right where Carol, right in front of the camera. Your job is to just help keep us straight. Right. And because this table is like super, super long. I am not breaking up on purpose, but there's a lot going on in here, and the internet is being worked on, so it could be that the yep. internet is going in and out. No, he's not that, dead. That is abdomen, honey. Oh, that's what you, I'm sorry, that's what you, you said. Let's do abdomen. Okay, let's go back to... Okay. They're doing the x-rays on a caracal. You can see him breathing. Go up here and click on the one. That's all right. Okay. Yeah, we hope it's treatable, too. Does not want our kisses.
extra on there. Because we did. I know. Okay. So if Are you, you want to bring him and okay. give him some fluid oxygen. Um, yeah, one two fluids exactly. those kidney stones? Um, the bladder stones can be surgically removed, but this isn't why he's not eating. What's the difference between a bladder stone and a kidney stone? Where they're does located. Does it get to the kidney yet? No, so that's the good news. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, here's his bladder. Oh, let me put the arrow on so it's not burning. This is his bladder right here with the stones. All those little white things are the stones. This big white thing is just poop. And this is his colon right here. And then all his small intestines are in here. And then these are his two kidneys, right here and here. So if there was a stone, it would be opaque. Most common stones are opaque. Not all stones, but most common ones, and the ones he has in his bladder are opaque. We would see them here too. So when Chloe the snow leopard had kidney stones, she actually only had stones in her kidney and not her bladder. But he has stones just in his bladder. So Classically, in, in normal cats, if we know what type of stone they are, we can either dissolve them with diet, but we also run the risk of him obstructing while he's while we're trying to dissolve them, because these tiny little stones have to travel in a boy. Well, in a boy cat's not so bad, but right out to here. And some of them are very small, so they could exclude the little tube that goes out there. So generally, we need surgery to remove them to be safe. He has a little arthritis right here too at his lumbosacral junction and a tiny bit up here at his first lumbar vertebrae. It's his chest, that's his microchip, these are his shoulder blades, this is his spine, this is his sternum, his heart is in here, he has some aging changes in his lungs. Again, that's his bladder. Carly's asking if you could shatter the stones when they're in the bladder. We don't normally. We do lithotripsy when, which is shattering them. We do that in, I don't know what they do in people, but animals generally not. Lithotripsy isn't as readily available for animals as it is for people. So in animals, we surgically remove them. The bladder is strangely very forgiving and heals well, and it's just better to get them out. Thinking we had to bring in people from New York with all their equipment for Chloe. Yeah, yeah. And we brought people in from New York. We brought a lithotripsy machine in from Clearwater or St. Pete, and it was a big deal. See video. Chloe, snow leopard lith lithotripsy. <laughs> it was actually cool. That it was, that was really, really a neat project. Okay. So, nothing that's going to change our mind about what we need to do here except the stones, which are probably not what's causing him not to eat very well. It's probably intermittently causing him urinary signs. Like if we saw blood in his urine, we would know the stones are bothering him right now. 
So bladder stones are not an emergency surgery, but it's something we need to think about. The CDC results are up on over here. If you want to look at those, and it's a way to definitely spend. Is Red Lord Cell Counts okay? He's not. Um, he's not anemic. That's good. A lot of cats, kidney disease is a very common disease in older cats. It's something we always worry about and think about. The most common signs are elevations in their kidney values that make them feel cruddy. They usually don't want to eat. And then they can also be anemic because your kidneys do three things. They flush the toxins out of your body, they help make the building blocks of red blood cells, and they help draw the water out of your urine. So when your kidneys aren't doing those things, we see elevations in kidney values because they're not pulling the toxins out of the blood. We see a dilute urine, a very white urine, because they're not pulling the water out of the urine. And we see pets who are anemic because they're not making the building blocks for red blood cells. When you become anemic, you also feel kind of weak and cruddy. Uh, but so far, we don't look like we're anemic, so that's good. Can we shut down the uh, X-ray generator noise? Yeah. I was going to say, if you're as far as you can get with that, that is the biggest priority. I was thinking we should have had you do that in the middle of X-ray. Step out, get the blood running. Um, Joe loves the caracals the most, and you can tell by the way she's rubbing his ears. It's like, oh, I would never get to do this in real life. <laughs> <laughs> <That's so soft. laughs> 
even the what is that called? The Henry the oh my god, I forgot the Henry's pocket or the I can't remember the proper name. So tell them what the Henry's pocket is. Um, there's a couple of theories about what it's for, but um, the one that I found the most evidence for is that it helps them hear higher pitched sounds. So for when they would be hunting, um, they want to be hearing high pitched things like rodents that they'd be hunting. Um, so the Henry's pocket helps to dull the lower pitched sounds so they're more attuned to the higher pitch. Which means they probably can't hear me at all. <laughs> noises they respond to like domestics or that or squeaky it. voice that gail makes too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? did i hear my name here all i heard was blah 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 blah, blah gail <laughs> i missed the best part <laughs> we were talking about how squeaky you voice. Yeah, higher pitch and get her carol was saying that you use your high pitch squeaky gail voice to talk to the cats <laughs> Oh, <laughs> That's oh, except for <laughs> Zeus Tiger. Really? Zeus Tiger like, Zuzu! Come on, Zuzu! <laughs> he likes the, oh, I just took one. Oh, okay. no. It's on the chart. Cool. Yeah, he likes the low, deep-pitched gale. Everybody else likes the high-pitched gale, <laughs> especially the cougar cubs. Well, it turns out it may be because that's the only thing they can hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ruth wants to know what his coat feels like. Um, He's kind of coarse more like a, a dog than a domestic cat, but he's not, he's still All soft. Right, so he's at two, three, four, special points. There's only going to be about four in this bag, so. Did she say especially the white bits? Yeah, they're really, <laughs> they're more really softer than the other fur. And the back of the is quite silky. Victoria, he is 19 years old, which is crazy old for a caracal. Leo, actually, bladder stones are not as bad as having kidney stones because they can remove them from the bladder more easily than from the kidney. But she said that's probably not what's causing him to not want to eat. That may make urination painful from time to time, but it's... Um, it would need to be dealt with, but it's not probably what's causing him to not want to eat right now. If he were straining to urinate or urinating blood, then that would be what's bothering uh, him no, most right sure. now. Sorry. But I'm, I'm not suspicious sorry, about his blood work. Jamie's better. <laughs> He's not nearly as matted up as the old cats mm -hmm. usually come in. No. Is it because you think his coat is not as, doesn't have as much undercoat that causes yeah, that? Yeah, he has a definitely a different coat. Ah, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I smeared it again. Here is just art. Here, here's some, here's, here's some, here's art. some art. Oh, yeah, yeah. But his tail is really rabid. But his tail is. But it's also been horribly wet, rainy, and like you know, the weather here has been yucky too. So if he's not, looks like it's coming out pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
They're not using gloves because they don't have any open wounds on the cat. And aren't there like very few things that humans can catch from cats? So strep throat. Strep throat. <laughs> well, don't kiss him. Oh, yes. The mask is annoying. Yeah. When my daughter was little, she had like she went through this phase of where every time you turn around, she was getting strep throat, and I. We'd go to the doctor, and I finally, you know, said, what is going on here? Why is she getting struck through all the time? And he went, um, do you have a cat? And I went, yes. And so we looked at her, and we said, do you want the cat? Like, eat your food? And, and she goes, oh, yeah, he drinks out of my, she drinks out of my milk cup all the time. And I'm like, oh, my God, stop that. <laughs> Don't let the cats drink out of your milk glasses because they will give you strep. <laughs> First last night, Babylon and I were sharing crackers. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you want that? No, I'll eat that. <laughs> like, don't share food with your cats. No, not only that, food human cats, food is not good for your cats. Anyway, you slice it. Yeah. Hey there, you're pretty again. You wonder what what is the holding pattern right now? He's getting fluids, some cutaneous fluids, in a camel bubble right here through this bag right there. Um, we gave yeah, him blood. some. Yeah. We gave him some anti-nausea medicine. Um, that was the injection I gave him just a few minutes ago. And we're waiting on blood work, so we're kind of in a waiting phase. Almost done. Monica, we do not anesthetize the cats yearly to give them exams. I think that's probably why our cats live a lot longer than they do in zoos, because they're not constantly being exposed to all of those chemicals and things that can build up in their systems. It's always a very dangerous thing to anesthetize a big cat because they just don't respond well to anesthesia. Eric, we don't know how Zika virus is going to be affecting people or animals yet. There's so much that's still unknown about it. There's a reaction. <laughs> She's like, it's a caracal, I love him. <laughs> I don't think it has much to do with the climate. I think August is always a hard month for the cats because it's so hot, but they're just old. We rescued 56 cats in 1993, 28 in 94, and 22 in 95, and those were just the fur farm cats. That didn't count servals and caracals and cougars and all of those guys. So they're all in their 20s now. They just don't live that long. Sometimes they save the fur for um, volunteers who are particularly close to that cat. Um, so is 
skinny doggies are very, very, very healthy. Um, so high that neither of them, all three of them, his BUN, his crab, and his phosphorus won't breed on the machine. Oh so, my gosh. So things that we offer for other cats, and if this were in like private practice, um, we could offer IV fluids, so that would be placing a catheter, putting an IV in, keeping him on an IV for many days with the hope that we could bring these values down, hope that we can. Not necessarily that we'll be able to bring it down to a decent level, but with the hope that we can bring it down to a level that he feels better. Um, with these cats, that's very hard. He would be miserable to be inside with an IV in for three to five days to, know, to then anesthetize him again to check his values and have them not go down enough to make him comfortable. So and he's going to chew it out in the first five and minutes. And he's going to chew it out in, in the first five minutes. What's remarkable, and we've seen this in other, in other cats, is that they get to a certain threshold and then they stop eating, which is much higher than what your domestic cat would get to. I mean, he's really only been off for a few days, and we've also had a hurricane come through here. So, you know, the question was, was he off? Because it's torrential rain every five minutes here. Yeah, everybody was not eating. Everybody was hurricane. kind of off and not moving around a lot because <laughs> we're partially flooded. Um, so, In, in a domestic cat, we might say, well, well, let's give this a try and, and see what happens. But we also have to understand that once cat's kidney values are elevated, 70% of the nephrons, which are the cells in the kidney, are already damaged. So we're trying to get him, we'll never get him back to normal. We would only get him back to a place that was tolerable. And he would probably have to get subcutaneous fluids multiple times a week so he wouldn't get dehydrated, so he wouldn't feel cruddy. So he, the maintenance things that he would need with IV fluids periodically and all of that isn't something that would allow him to have a good quality of life, whereas a domestic cat you might be able to do that. So with him at the age of 19, I mean, <laughs> 19 is awesome that he did this well, but I honestly think the fair thing for him would be to let him go. Yeah. Which sucks. I'm sorry. Who's the best here? <laughs> oh, here no good, Sachi. The rest is the best. So we don't um, put that on live television and we'll be turning off the cameras in here as we euthanize Rusty. I'm very sad that this turned out this way, but thank you for joining us.